everybody. Welcome to Pillow Talk with Paul Gano. Today, my guest is home builder, father, and comedian, Zahan Kursigara. What's up? Brother, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem, man. We've gotten some good conversation already, even before we started filming. Yeah. Um, so you're you're gonna start a podcast? Do you know when that's gonna when that's gonna come out? In the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna start filming. Yeah, and I'll probably start dropping like podcasts for people to watch in May. Yeah, right. Yeah, just looking up up gear and stuff like that. Yeah, and I want to like I said, I want to film several episodes so that I can have regular content coming out. Yeah, are you doing like one a week? Or are you gonna do multiple a week? I'm gonna do multiple a week. It's it, I mean I'm just, it's with comedians, right? So it depends yeah. on the, when they're available. Yeah. I'm trying to get some American comedians who I've spoken to and okay. some local guys and yeah. things like that. So some, yes. of it, some of it will be Zoom podcasts, unfortunately. Oh, I got you. I got right? you. Some of them. Are you trying to set up, like, are you going to have, like, a studio at your place? Are you are you sorting that out, too? Yeah, a little bit. I'm just trying to figure, yeah, I'm trying to figure out all the logistics. All yeah, right. right. Whether I want to do it at, like, a bar Cause I've got, you know, I've got that regular show at Uptown Social, the only yeah. I could do it there, but it's yeah. noisy. It's yeah, a bar, yeah. right? So yeah. or I've never, like, I've never done the the live thing, so I'm not sure how that would work, but yeah, it'd be weird. But yeah, the podcast has got the the, the concept of it. Like I was saying to you, it's called Comedians Saving the World. Okay. So every comedian that comes on talks about something they're excited about, whether it's a social issue, political issue, religious. Okay. One guy was talking about like you know. Uh, he wants to talk about eating the entire animal. Right? Okay. Because we waste something like 35 to 40% of an animal. You know, different people have different things. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be more objective. I'm not really going to try and get too much into my political beliefs and, you know, fight with them. But I'll still play a little devil's advocate and make it interesting. I just think that most comedians are so smart. That's why comedians are fun to talk to. Mm -hmm. Right? That I want to actually hear what they have to say as opposed to just, you know, fluff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the times when we interact, that's why I, I like doing this, you know? Like, when I started, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. um, like, it was pandemic, and I wasn't sure if I was going to continue after things got back to normal. It took about two years, and then, I don't know, I like doing it. I like, I, and um, I like your idea about, about branching out, too. Like, I think something that's important and... At least what I've seen. I mean, I don't know a lot of comedians that are doing podcasts. And I know a lot of people that, like, you know, did a little bit for a while. Um, and then, like, stopped doing it. Rainville's doing something something good right now. Jay Rainville. Okay. He's got a good thing. Um, but it's important. And his thing is kind of, like, uh, it's lightly approaching. It's, like, you know, a, a light conversation about, like, their religious beliefs. You know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And I like that it's coming from that angle because you can bring in guests that aren't just comedians from Toronto. Yeah. You know, I think it's important to kind of like branch out. Like I get comedians, I get like, I also ref and stuff. So I'm I, like, I try to get like wrestlers and other referees. And, uh, my next guest is like a Muay Thai fighter. Uh, like I'm just trying to, you ever done Muay Thai? Players. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I, did, I did it once. Yeah. In Vegas. Like once, just like one class. Yeah. Cause like, so I used to box. Okay. All right. And then my boxing coach, Called me up. Do you remember the De La Hoya Mayweather fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he calls me up and he's because he was in Vegas for the fight. And he's like, "Bro, I got extra tickets. Fly down." So me and my boy fly down to Vegas and we get there. And he's like, "The tickets fell through." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> he's like, "But I'm gonna, you know." So we watched like we ended up watching the fight on this little TV, like a 20 inch TV, and his yeah. like girlfriend's like ghetto apartment that's just outside of the strip. Gotcha. But then he's like, "Don't worry, I'm gonna take you guys to some classes and stuff." So we did a Muay Thai class, but dude, like the you know those. those um, Bags that for, for the knees. Yeah, yeah. Grab the guy and you need the bag. I was getting like boom, boom, boom. Like, I got home and I welts all over my chest from my own wrist hitting my yeah. chest. I was like, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> yeah, it's brutal. It's and like me. when you do those knees, it's always like you're just doing them for like a time period or something. I did I did Muay Thai for, for a few years. Um, I don't do it right now. I'd like to get back into it. I think when my daughter's older, like for sure we're going to do, like I got to get her into into something something like that where she's like where she just feels comfortable and not afraid of like yeah I, try, I tried to get my kids into boxing yeah last year yeah I brought them to the local boxing club but they paired them together 
And then the whole ride home, they were just yelling at each other. You hit me here. You did this. Uh. Okay. So they didn't really want. I, I box with them at home though. Like I have pads, and I do like so they know how to throw a punch. And cool, know, cool. That kind of stuff to protect themselves. Yeah. But I'm also kind of cognizant that I don't want them to have broken noses and. <laughs> yeah. At that, you know, they're they're eleven and twelve. We don't want them like. <laughs> eleven and twelve. So, uh, cause I feel like I just knew. You have a girl, just two look, daughters. she's a two daughters. Okay. Yeah. So they got the one that sings. Yeah. She's a twelve-year-old, and then the other one's a swimmer. She does like competitive swim. Hell yeah! So she's just swimming, super man. busy with that. That's like seven days a week now. It's crazy. Swimming? Yeah, man. Damn. Do you guys have a pool? We did last year. Now okay. We, we moved, so we don't now. But if we don't need. She's, she's in like every day. We got to take her to the pool. Gotcha. She's on a team. Yeah, she's a big deal now. Yeah, so it's just, like, she's like she wants a scholarship. That's. She's oh, alleged, shoot. That's she's like wicked, nine man. years old. She's like, I want a scholarship. I think she knew what it was. <laughs> she's like, I want it. <laughs> just knew it was a big deal. Yeah, it yeah. It's in her mind, right? It's so I'm like, you know, cool. Good goal to have. Yeah. yeah. Saves me some money if you get a scholarship. Absolutely, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Long run, it's good for, for both of you, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That's wicked. I'm I'm like on um my leave right now. You So like dudes can take like five weeks paid leave uh, when your daughter, in your daughter's, or your child's first year of life so like you know i'm doing this like i said she's turning one on may 4th Mm -hmm. so i took about two months off a little longer than five five weeks but uh yeah we started going to our friend's pool and just like taking her in the water and the first time it was rough like yeah. Towards the end, she got more comfortable. We took her out a little early because she was shivering. At that age, they go in waves, too, because my buddy Mark, he has a little guy named Valdemar, mm. and they were living in Montreal for a year because Mark got transferred there for work, and they lived in a condo with a pool, an indoor pool, and they took this kid from three months every single day, and he was, like, basically swimming. He couldn't swim because he didn't have the body strength, but he was, like, pad- paddling, and he was super into it. Took him out of the pool because they moved back here, so it was winter time. And then he started going to the pool in the summer, and he was terrified. Mm. And it just goes in waves. And he got comfortable, and he got scared. And, you know, at that age, it's so... Like, my daughter who swims, she was terrified of putting her head into the water until she was seven. And That's wow. And then all of a sudden, she learned to swim, and you just couldn't get her out of the pool. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, man. It's crazy when they're little, right? Because you never know what they're going to get into or what they get excited about, and it changes all the time. 11 and 12, though. You're at a different... A different uh stage too one of your daughters uh the singer um great singer i think i saw a thing of her doing creep by radiohead yeah she's, on your... she's a postmodern jukebox version of it dude great job great job yeah so we're going to go to ottawa she's doing a singing contest there next end of the Sick. month nice she's trying to get on america canada's got talent next year that's what's up, man. Yeah, because, you know, why not, right? Hell yeah, dude. She goes and does a... We come to Mississauga, actually, all the time, because that's where, like, there's a bunch of open mics that I... Because I grew up in Mississauga, so I know people. Where are you at? Burlington? Burlington. Okay. Yeah, so we come to Mississauga, and they have some open mics for uh, singers. Yeah. I actually found open mics because they were asking me to do comedy at them. Okay. But, I don't know, have you ever done comedy at an open mic where this was music? It's terrible. One time. Yeah, it wasn't it just, great. It's the worst, no. right? Because, like, people get this high off of music, and then you start talking... And they just lose all interest, right? <clears throat> so I was—I told her, I said to the guy who runs it, I was like, can I bring my daughter? Yeah, yeah, bring her. So she goes down, and she's got like a fan base at this thing now. All right. Do you know uh, Cineplex Junction? I in do. Town Center? Yeah, that's where it is? Yeah, so the first Saturday of every month, they do an open mic there. Sick. So she does that one, then she goes to, what's it called, Coquins or something, in Streetsville, something like that. Oh, I don't know. That's, I, I, those Irish names I can never say. Anyways, yeah, yeah, that yeah. place. And then Shabin, which is like at the Etobicoke border at uh, Eglinton and, uh, at, and uh, what's it, Dixie kind okay. of thing. Okay. So there's one, it's just three of those with that guy. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to find her some stuff in Burlington or some. This weekend, actually, she made, like, so we got, because uh, we moved, we finally got all of our stuff out of storage. Mm. And I have like an old, you know, like a speaker with a mic. So she's going to go down to the lake in Burlington and busk. All That's right. First time she's excited. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I wanted to actually get into um, Busker Fest. It happens at like in Port Credit usually. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, like just as I remembered about it last year, like the uh, submissions were closing. I gotta get more on top of. Of that kind of thing. It's but. hard though, as a comic still, right? Like, would you go as a comic or do something yeah, else? Yeah, yeah, that's what I would yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. 
Because again, because like people when they see you talking, it's hard to grab their attention. But yeah, and, it's a different kind you know, of thing. It, the like the best, my favorite places um, to see comedy are like just smaller. Not not even necessarily smaller, but places with like low roofs. You know, yeah, where, yeah, every, yeah. where it's a little you can get it a little darker. <laughs> You know, and everyone isn't just, like, looking at other people and they can, like, just fully be submersed at, like, the light at the end of, yeah, so you like, know? Yeah, like, you came to my show at Uptown before where yeah, there's yeah. little lights in the side. Yeah, 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 So I ordered an actual spotlight now. Okay. And it's made such a difference. I mean, yeah? comics are complaining it's blinding them. Okay. That's what spotlights do, <laughs> right? But now you turn the lights up and you have, like, a light on somebody. So they're the center of attention. Right, as opposed yeah. to like so much going on around you at the bar, yeah. right? It, that was a fun time when I did your show, dude. That yeah, was a fun time. It's been a bit of a road. March was a little bit slow. Yeah. I think it was a March break and, you know, St. Patrick's Day was jammed, but it was just drunk people. Yeah. Who were there like, because they had a band before apparently. Okay. Again, with the music before a comedy show. And these people were all hammered. They were talking the entire time. Nobody listened to the call. One guy just put his phone next to the mic and played Sweet Home Alabama for his whole set and then got off. I really? Think, I think that was the only time people paid attention. They started singing along. Woo! Yeah. yeah, that's hilarious. That's <laughs> yeah, I so like funny. your show. I really like the rec room. It was good, but um, you did the... the do- Which show did you do? Did With you Mark do the first Trinidad, one or did you do the, the second one? one? Oh, first yeah, one. yeah, yeah. See, it was my first time doing a show set up like... So, like that that place also with that place because uh cineplex owns rec room yeah i saw it online today the guy actually. who does um like the events there mm-hmm. he wants to get me at cineplex junction that's just a little little footnote so like mm-hmm. a, maybe you know if these things kind of continue uh you know the way they've been going i'll get uh get some contracts for I, li- some shows I, I like there. The, i like the rec room layout because it's yeah. kind of enclosed it's part it's, of the rec room but it's still like so when you're in there you yeah pay attention they to put the a curtain up and, and stuff yeah. like that there's things i really like about it and there's things i don't like about it uh like specifically the setup i'm like i mean you can hear outside which makes for like yeah, some distraction some comedians can work with it and make something funny happen some just like go on that's generally how i tend to do Dude, it is just kind of like I, I, I was at a show in uh just outside of Brampton, there was it called, anyways, towards Vaughn area, mm. and so the guy calls us down. Yeah, show at the bar. At the same time, in the same bar, they have karaoke mm. on the other side of the bar. There's no wall in between yeah. or anything. So they're like you're like trying to make jokes in between people singing off key. <laughs> <laughs> so well, the, the noise you had was very minor in comparison that's fair that's fair it could but, definitely be worse yeah, you know yeah. um, but some people like aren't a fan of it and I get it yeah um, I like the place overall I, I like doing shows there I'm going to continue to do and you got a good size stage there. right so for like your, your setup. I'm trying to figure out yeah it, it is a nice comfortable the next one I'm doing at comedy bar and I'm still kind of like trying to it's going to be tight but we'll make it happen um Comedy bar is an interesting place, eh? Yeah, you've done shows there, obviously. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? The thing, the thing about it that's weird is that it's kind of started getting its reputation as being Toronto's main comedy place. Yeah, like it's like the comedy cellar. The of main Toronto. one, at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On Bloor, yeah. Like, cause, you know, all the big guys when they come now, they want to go to comedy bar, but comedy bar doesn't even book anything. They're just like own the building and rent everything out right mm. like you just rent it to producers which is so different from like if you were to LA or New York or mm-hmm. like you can't get on stage at Comedy Cellar or Comedy Store in LA it's like, impossible you gotta know people you gotta audition it's just like the Comedy Bar I can call up and be like yeah can I get the room for tomorrow at 11 o'clock yeah okay it's free blah blah, blah pay 50 bucks and then we can get on stage mm. right so it's kind of a cool setup that you can actually do that as opposed to you know these other places yeah the thing with with Comedy Bar so like I I started producing shows there that's where i started and okay. i'm like kind of going back there i had an issue Were you living and in then i just kind of no, no 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 i had an issue with one of like some content in one of my shows it was mild but was so i started show? going to danforth pardon it was the same show that you're doing now or a different t- t- uh, show all uh, like i have three so oh, okay. the first one i started was called it's called the monthly show which kind of has turned into not a monthly show it's kind of like an ironic name now but i still do it um and then i have lafeteria um, and Nice Lapper I have like two competitions. The monthly show is just like a standard pro show. Mm-hmm. And like the competitions, like Lafeteria is more geared towards newer comedians, but I've had some like experienced dudes on there. Um, Nice Lapper City is kind of like a mix. 
like uh, the second show I think that you were at, um, like someone who's <laughs> like a wrestler buddy of mine who's done quite a few open mics and stuff, but hasn't doesn't really consider himself a comedian. Like he won, dude. Oh yeah. Like like, and it's not like an audience vote thing. It's like a judge thing. Mm-hmm. And he was good, eh? And he was just good. And it's sometimes it's like it's nice you get put into like situation and like. Not to say that that other comedians were bad, but and also he was like against like Anna Lau and like Matt Render, like he had had some stiff competition, and he still came out on top. And I like kind of, you know, putting some newer comedians in those situations. The, those spots for me are generally like, hey, can you bring some people out if you'd like a spot at this where you could possibly beat these guys, get a headlining spot, you know, and put mm-hmm. yourself, it's going to be hard, but you can do it. It's obviously yeah, yeah, possible, yeah. you know? Yeah. I'm not sure about the 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock thing, though. It's weird, man. I felt like your show kind of like, la- like the, the second show was full, and your show was like a third full, and yeah, I was yeah. just, I was a little disappointed at, at that. I didn't lose any money on the show, um, and the over, like, the overhead cost for that shit is like that show at that place that time because I'm doing two shows and it's on a Friday night like it's a lot so I used to do them on Thursdays like 7 p.m. one show Thursdays and it was like half the rent and like yeah so there's a lot of things you have to consider when you start a producing man oh man I'm I'm really looking at producing more seriously now Mm -hmm. like I'm looking at uh, doing larger venues yeah yeah because if you're gonna the way I look at it so you remember I did that movie theater uh, show? Do you remember that? Did you see that? I don't know. So I rented a film.ca. Mm-hmm. And then I, there's a, two Facebook groups that are really big in Oakville and Burlington called Burlington Dads and Oakville Dads. Mm-hmm. And they are like massive. And they do events all the time. So I said, you know what? Like I'm going to partner with them. Just donate the money to them for the first show. Mm-hmm. And they came in, you know, the guys, and awesome guys. Good intentions. And they're like, okay, we're going to do this date, which is the day before, day after Valentine's Day, which probably wasn't great. Mm-hmm. Right, and then it ended up snowing that day as well, <laughs> right? But they were like, "We're gonna sell this show out in like a week, no problem. Don't don't even do anything. Just we're gonna sell it out because they always sell out their stuff." But they didn't put any effort into it. Mm-hmm. So we sold sixty five tickets out of one hundred and fifty, mm-hmm. and out of that, probably twenty five thirty were like people I I pushed to come because I was like, "These guys have barely sold anything." Mm-hmm. So I started going out of my way to sell tickets. But even if like so, at Film.ca for example, it's a hundred and fifty person room. Movie theater, it's got a stage, got sound, everything. Where is that? Oakville. Okay. <clears throat> the problem is, even in a 150 person room, if I were to sell it out, I did the math and I, you know, paid the comics and, you know, have decent comics and that sort of thing. It's like $1,500 of profit, right? Which isn't bad. You know, in comedy. People, That's if you sell out. If I sell out. Yeah. You know, which, you know, let's say 18, let's say you do 80%. And you're like 1200 bucks, whatever, 1000 bucks, which is fine. But, I'm looking at looking at it and I'm like, it takes me the same amount of work if I plan something two months in advance to go out and get like a bigger name comic and do like Miss Saga, um, what's that place called? Like by City Hall. Miss Saga. Celebration Square? Like they're, they, you're talking about outside? No, no, inside. Oh, um, I, oh, fuck. I do know what you're talking about. I don't know. Performing Arts Center, maybe? There you go. Is it, that is. Because is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perform- Burlington Performing Arts Center, for example, because I live in Burlington, so I'm looking at that. 750 person room, right? It costs 6000 bucks to rent it for the night, mm-hmm. right? Which is great. Then you got to spend 10 Gs on a comic that's going to fill it up. But the tickets will sell for 40 bucks to 50 bucks, for 60 bucks. You're going to walk away with ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 on a night. Mm she do that once a month as do as opposed to trying to do like four times a month at a smaller place and make no money right that's what I'm kind of looking at I mean your upfront investment obviously yeah. is much higher so you got to build up like you know a plan that you're gonna do and you're taking a bigger risk so you're looking at like do I take the risk and go with something bigger or do I do small shows <laughs> yeah right it's always it's always that if but if you can get decent sized if you can get decent comics like I was talking to Jeremy Hotz, mm-hmm. Jim Brewer, yeah, yeah, Bobcat Goldwaith. He's still yeah. alive. <laughs> guys like that, like I'm yeah. reaching out to those kind of guys. Guys who do like Comedy Cellar in New York who are blowing up, mm-hmm. trying to see who's available if they'd be willing to come do a couple of shows in Ontario. Yeah, because like, you know if you're, if you're flying someone out here, the other thing is, 
you got to pay for their hotel, got to pay for their flight. So ideally, you want them to do two or three shows. Mm-hmm. Right? So just trying to figure out what the best way to make money in comedy is. Man, this is a good chat, bro. I like chatting with you. I'm like, I never, you know, it's just making me think differently than I've been thinking. You know, I like that. We're not big name comics yet. May hopefully one day, right? But what do we get? Like fifty bucks, maybe a hundred dollars. Yeah. At, to like to perform. Most of the time, nothing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, that's part of the grind. It's you know, it's how you pay your dues and so forth. But if you want to do it full time, you got to make enough money that it's going to support your family, pay your bills. So I've been sitting there doing the math, trying to chop it up. Okay, if I want to do it, how do I build it so that it can be something that's actually a feasible business? Yeah. Right? And I think a lot of comics come at it from a different point of view where they just want to get stage time. They just want to focus on you know quick things, have fun. They've got their full-time job. You know, So it's not really about the money. Mm-hmm. Which is, everyone's got their own thing. Like I know a lot of comics who tell me, like, I don't want to be a big comic. I just like I just enjoy going on stage and making jokes. I get that. I'm like I wouldn't even necessarily say like uh, my ideas. I just want to make a living doing the things that um I love to do and like this kind of gets down like it's also like what I like about your idea of bringing like a big name in into it is like exposure. Like a lot of my okay, so like um, Knee Slapper City mm-hmm. was just an idea that kind of came about. I like doing competitions, and I didn't want to do the same kind of thing that I do with uh, Lafeteria. Laugh- and I wanted to get like the audience involved. So that's how like the I'm gonna draw like um, you know an audience member, put your name in here, mm-hmm. and you could be a part of the show. Kind of came about. You know, I know it's not a super original idea, but I've seen, like, judging panels and, like, I don't know of any with, like, an audience member brought in. And I thought that was a cool way to kind of yeah. get exposure and just kind of, I get their, you get know, their, their, their uh, socials and stuff like that. I tag them. Their friends are like, oh, you were part of a show. They come out to the next show. Like, every Knee Slapper Shitty show has, like, I'm not making bank. You know, you know how yeah. it is, but, like. Um, it's growing. They're growing. Every show has every show has been better, and if I count the last two as like one whole thing, which mm-hmm. I do, you know, yeah, overall. Yeah. Um, and so I like that idea because it kind of I don't want to like we were talking I think before we started recording about mm-hmm. like um, you know just my approach and how I was thinking about coming at it differently on social media just because. I want the exposure. I want to get my stuff out there to the people that don't know me. It's just happening. It's happening, but it's happening at a rate. It's slower than I want it to be, you know? And I like the idea of getting a bigger comedian, having that exposure versus like making a bunch of videos. Well, do, you, do you ever listen to a um, every day. Hot Breath podcast? No. So check that out. It's an awesome podcast. Who does that? Joel Byers. He's out of Atlanta. Okay, I don't know. But he's got a huge following in Canada, like all over the world. It's mm. a huge part. So it's basically, I found it over COVID. Because I kind of started in comedy over COVID. I was mm. taking a class. Mm-hmm. We had two classes in person, then COVID hit. And we finished the class in, online, and then I stopped. Where were you doing that? With Scott Falconbridge and at Levity. Okay. But then I just stopped doing comedy because COVID came, and I wasn't doing it yet or whatever. So I redid the class. Uh, in 2023 November and or October November whatever did the final class and I've been doing comedy pretty steady since for like the last what four months I guess mm-hmm. so I'm pretty fresh alright right. but I've been listening to the Hot Breath podcast regardless I just, I just enjoy the podcast mm-hmm. and he gets huge comics on like he's had Mark Norman several times he's had like I don't know like so many people re- like on the podcast who are, like you wouldn't expect and he's got guys like today I was listening to one of the podcasts and it was a pro- guy's a producer in Austin and just talking about the things he does to create buzz and sell shows out and like he produces podcasts he, he started off as a comic and ended up being becoming a producer mm-hmm. and like how he makes his money and all that so just it's so much on that but you should check it out yeah I'll check it out but one of the things that Joel always says and I, I actually talk to Joel Byers all the time like I just reached out to him I started chatting with him I'm, gonna, I'm trying to bring him to do a few shows in Toronto mm-hmm but he says, he goes, just reach out to people. He's like, you'd be surprised how many people, especially for podcasts, are just like, yeah. 
if I'm in town, I'll come meet with you, or if, mm-hmm. you know, we can do it over Zoom or whatever, and like you know, and then you get that name. Like all of a sudden, you get to put Mark Norman on your podcast. You get, you know, a hundred thousand views instead of the fifty extra views you get with me. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I've never done the Zoom thing, man. I don't. Yeah, I've never, I've never done it. I'm. But but you know what? Surprisingly, like, so what he'll do too is like for Mark Norman. I've wa- I watched actually the hit that podcast yesterday. He's had Mark Norman three times. Mm. He he was in town doing uh, whatever comedy club in Atlanta. And he would just go to his hotel room. He'd bring his setup, set it up in Mark's hotel room, and do the podcast. Mm. You never know, right? What's yeah. the worst thing they, they say is no? Or they just don't get back to you? <laughs> yeah. No, that's definitely... And I've reached out, like, um, to, like, some some bigger names outside of the comedy world on my pod. Like, I've had some, some fairly well-known, like, wrestlers on. Okay. Um, and, like... Those have some views. I I want to have bigger comedians, but the, the problem is, um, luckily, we're in a, like, a hot spot for wrestling. I don't know like if you're a fan or not, but Southern Ontario is super... like There's so many promotions. Dude. Really? Eh? There's so many. I, I haven't watched wrestling um, since the 90s. Like, so. <laughs> every weekend, you could you could find like five shows to go to, six shows to go to, like, you know? So it's kind of like comedy. It's similar, like, <sighs> game, I mean, probably a little bit less. It's, I would say a little less. But I mean, the shows um, take a lot more. They promote. need bigger spaces yeah, you need and a ring, that kind and, of thing. But there's yeah. a lot, a lot going on. So um, I, I saw, in, I think it was your last podcast, actually, mm-hmm. you were talking about how sometimes you feel bad because guys, like the wrestlers will come out and they'll put on a show even if there's one person in the crowd. Mm-hmm. Right, but sometimes it's a full house and just so random. Sometimes, I guess, it depends on the producer of the show as well, right? And yeah, and it's hard. Like my thing was like, it's hard to. It's still hard for me when I see low attendance to like have a positive attitude. I I think I'm getting better at it. Um, comedy wise or just wrestling yeah, wise? comedy wise. <laughs> like uh, wrestling, you're a ref, so it's different. I guess, yeah, right? it's completely different because I'm not like. The Performing. main attraction. Okay. I'm just kind of like the background guy. If anything, like, a good ref is someone you don't really notice a lot, you know? Yeah. So, like, that's my my thing. I'm just kind of trying to blend into the background. Um, and they're the main attraction. So, I guess it's different do you, do you, when do you, I do that, well, but well, comedy is... So, what I've been doing, because I'm hosting now, Yeah. that's why I started that Uptown Social Show, because I mm-hmm. wanted to get better at hosting. The reps and the, the reps, like, everything, it gets right? you better at crowd work. Crowd work. That, and that's what I was going to say. The crowd yeah. work, like, the last three shows... I've barely done any jokes just being all crowd work crowd nice. work crowd work crowd work and i'm yeah. getting better and better and better at it yeah and have you come up with any material on those nights where you're just doing crowd working like oh there's something here whatever i said there's something here uh, a or, do you bit. record do you record your sets I, I, not when i'm hosting because i'm no? just, i'm so busy like setting everything up it takes I, up a lot of space to like that just, space bro <laughs> yeah that's the thing like, i don't want to record the whole show but then yeah. i forget to like i'll record like what the first thing and then i'll just forget to keep recording I'm like damn it yeah 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 <laughs> right? i almost want to have like someone there like you know record for me it'd be so easy but every time you get up there yeah, yeah you know it's such a pain but with that so i did um block and co in burlington that's dan brennan's show mm-hmm. he does it on a i think it was a wednesday night or a thursday night and it was unfortunately the night that i went it was a like dead night there was maybe i think there's five audience members yeah right so scott falconbridge went on just before me and i don't know if you've ever seen scott but he's very manic. Like his stage persona is very like lots of energy and manic. And, mm-hmm. and it was the first time I've seen him just being like just so calm because there was nobody there. He was just like telling his jokes like this. And it was like, and I asked him. He goes, "Well, I don't want to over amplify for the size of crowd because then I look like a crazy person." And five people are gonna be like, "Cause they're, they're, it's so intimate." Yeah. Right. So, but on those kind of crowds, it's great to do crowd work because you can. It is intimate, right? So, you get, like when you start developing your crowd work chops, it's so nice to like, chat with them because they want to chat with you. There's just nothing much going on. I know. It's hard sometimes when you make jokes because, like, a lot of my jokes are male oriented. Mm-hmm. You know, the guys will find funnier because they're about being married and stuff from a man's perspective. And yeah. Things from a man's perspective. So sometimes women will go, "Oh," and the guys will laugh, and then they can kind of play off of that. But there was like. A mother and daughter, a guy and his wife, and one lady. So <laughs> I got a lot of groans, and the, and the guy with his wife wasn't wasn't gonna laugh because he's just freshly yeah. married, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what what I actually find with crowd work, coming back to what you were saying about getting getting uh, um, jokes from it, 
is I'll get jokes on the way home. Oh, I should have said that. Yeah, that happens a lot to right? me too. And yeah. then I remember them though. So I, I can't remember who told me, but someone told me goes, or maybe it was on the pod, that Hot Breath podcast. Maybe he said, I think it was on there actually. They go, with crowd work, go out there and do it like 25 times. Don't worry like if the jokes don't hit, it doesn't matter. By the time you get to the 26th time, you have so many jokes stored in the back of your head. Because people will generally give the same responses. Yeah, you're ready for like... You have yeah. you, you have things now loaded. Yeah. Right? Like the first time I, w- I tried to do crowd work, I was just like, so what do you do for a living? And the person's like, I'm a plumber. I'm like, okay. I don't know where to go with this. Right? There's That's something that you don't realize. And I didn't realize that for like a long time. I was scared of crowd work for a long time, dude. It's yeah. good that you got into hosting like so early because it's not like... It took me like a year to shake that shit. Yeah. Even like I did stuff at Second City mm. and I did... T- two i think there's like three levels i did two of them and uh like the second like level is just you writing jokes going in every week with like a new five or like improvements to like whatever jokes that your teacher or whatever just you know improvements to jokes that you did the previous week um and uh oh there's my lady that was picked up fuck what was i saying uh, Second City Improvements of Jokes. Um, fuck. We're talking about uh, crowd work? Yes, yes, okay, here we are, back. <laughs> um, and they're probably not even going to hear what was the distraction for me. <laughs> um, yeah, dude, even there, I didn't want to host. Like, I avoided it. I didn't host any of the shows. Like, everyone in the class went, like, a couple times, and I was, like, scared. And... Early on, I just got angry at, like, audience members for, like, trying to interact with me. Like, I was the guy What's the first name? year where I'd be like, shut the fuck up, you know? <laughs> and I realized, like, that's, it just creates a weird atmosphere for everybody, you know? Yeah. Me included, so. So I've, I've always been, like, super extroverted and social. So it wasn't hard for me to do that part. It was more just getting the jokes, the chops to actually make it funny. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's great to just go and start chatting with people, but the rest of the people in the crowd are like, why are you just talking to this guy? There's nothing funny about that. <laughs> right? So now I'm starting to build that. And I'm getting people coming up to me in the crowd between my, you know, when between the comics. Like, oh, man, God, you're so funny. I love it. Blah, blah, blah. So I must be on the right track. No, you're definitely doing something good, man. Right? You're funny, dude. You know, I didn't realize you were just four, four months in, so... Yeah, man. Starts, you know, building it up slowly. At, the only thing with hosting, though, is I haven't been writing um, as much material for my set mm. sometimes, right? You do a weekly, though, right? Yeah. That's a weekly. It's a weekly. Okay. So, you know, it's hard to also... But I get I get stuff... A lot of my material I get from my kids. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I wrote a, I wrote this one joke, which I tried this week, which hit really well. And uh, so it's like, oh, my, my daughter showed me some shitty dad joke thing, right? And I was like, oh, we'll, we'll make it better. We'll go. It was about ghosts, right? So I was like, why the girl ghosts find the girl sexy? Because he liked her boobies, right? And then she goes, what about her booty? And then my other daughter goes, what about her personality? And we all just started laughing. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I said yeah. that on stage. And she said, what about her personality? And I just, I just started bursting out laughing. The crowd just went nuts. And I was like, that bitch crazy. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Right? So Was that your, your younger daughter? No, the older one was. The older about... one said, what about the personality? Yeah. Okay. The younger one was all about the booty. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Yeah. You got any, uh, you got any parenting advice? What, 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 what? Let's not phrase it that way. What if uh, you met yourself just as you're about to have your first daughter? What would... What would you say to yourself? That's a, that's a hard question. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to put you on yeah, the spot. No. The, the, the be- when, I, when they were little, the best advice someone gave me was, don't worry, they don't break as easy as people tell you. Mm. Oh, man, dude. Literally. <laughs> Everyone's so nervous, right? <laughs> oh, it's so intense. Like, we were uh, at the hospital for a few days after Aaliyah was born, dude, mm-hmm. and um, brought her home. And fed her, and then, like, just forgot to burp her. Mm-hmm. 
put her down and she started like choking like she tried to burp it was like choking she's just tiny bro yeah and like we fucking panicked man and it was crazy and we dude it was like our first night home we're like she could die at any fucking moment yeah you know like dude yeah the way you did versus like (laughs) and i know like she's stronger and stuff now but like even still like after about a month you you kind of yeah, you, you get see that, but it's second. Second baby's easier. It's like twelve in one hand. You're not yeah, <laughs> past your wife like this. Like, <sighs> she she swaddled up. It'll be fine. What could happen? No, but the, I think the best advice is just have fun with them. Yeah, and treat them like normal people. Yeah, because uh, one thing I hate is when people treat kids like kids, because the kids they're smart, right? And they're not obviously they haven't developed, and they're constantly developing. So are we. But they like to be treated the same way you treat adults. They want to be talked to the same way. Obviously, you, you, they're not puppies. And some people are like, oh, you're so cute. Oh, this is that. And you're like, you're not helping your kid develop. Mm-hmm. Like, and with my kids, we took them out from a young age to, like, bars, to, you know, wherever we were. Like, we, we didn't stop living our lives because mm-hmm. we had kids. Like, some people just stop. Like, I have cousins. They'd be like, oh, we don't do anything. Our kids have to be in bed by seven o'clock. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. no sugar and this and that. Yeah. Like, I'm like, dude, you were doing like cocaine two months ago. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell happened to you, right? Yeah, yeah. But like, you know, like we just kind of just continued living our lives, and the kids, because of that, they are very socially um, advanced from a lot of other kids whose parents don't. Mm-hmm. Like, so they're they're comfortable. Like even from a young age, they'd like I, they'd be like, oh, can I get some more drink, Daddy? I'll go ask for it. Like they're not shy. They, mm-hmm. they'll, they'll go ask for things that they want in life. They'll go do things, right? So, and they know how to have fun. And especially nowadays with the internet being so big for kids, like like my daughter's friends, it's so weird. Like the 12 year old, we live right next door now to one of her best friends. And she's like, when I was growing up, I had one of my best friends next door. And I would, every morning, let's go yeah. do this, let's go do that, go ride bikes, go do that. These kids are just like, Oh, yeah, like, well, we'll just go. She's on TikTok right now, and she doesn't want to come out of the house. So I'm like, oh, go, go ride your bike to a different friend's house and see what they're up to, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It's weird. Like, so you got to keep them, like, out of the house. You got to keep them energized. You got to keep them social because if they're not social, it's so easy for them to fall into this introverted trap of just sitting at a, a tablet or a phone. You know, you got to keep them around people. Mm-hmm. And I think that was a big problem with COVID for a lot of kids too, right? They got really introverted because they were stuck inside the house. Yeah. That's what people yeah, tell that's me. Gonna, oh, I, I imagine it's affected a lot of kids. I actually, for my kids, thought it was good because they learned to use a computer. Yeah? Because before that was just tablets, but they had to they had to be on t- on uh, in school with a oh, computer, yeah. right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Like, they were typing and, like, doing programs and stuff, which they don't normally do because everything else is just, like, weird tablet stuff, right? Different world, man. <laughs> yeah, I asked someone else on this podcast, like... Basically the same question. Yeah. And uh, you gave a great answer. I, I enjoy your answer. And it's like, any kind of legitimate advice I'll take, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just trying to look at it from... Like, we... Just trying to learn from people that, you know, have made mistakes. I mean, I make, I'm still going to make mistakes, but it's like, you know... I think the idea of, like, th- th- learning from each other is very... Good, but I feel like I'm losing track. Um, <laughs> it's okay. The guy, the guy, his advice legitimately was hit your kids. That's what he told me, bro. And this is before I had my daughter. Hit your kids? Yeah, that. And I'm like, look, man. Okay, I I don't know how you you feel about this, but I'm just gonna say my piece and we yeah. get on it. Um, first of all, it was weird. Not great advice. Um, <laughs> but like. My thing is, if hitting your kids actually worked, like, the people that were hit as kids would have only ever been hit once. Do you know what I mean? And everyone I know that was hit as a kid... I said multiple times? Oh, a shitload of times. I don't think it teaches you not to do bad things. Okay, it teaches you three things when your fucking parent does that to you. First thing, it teaches you they're an asshole. Second thing, it teaches them that 
it's okay to resolve your conflicts that way. If, if anything, it teaches them that this is the way you do handle conflicts. Yeah. And um, third, it just it makes them better liars. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel. Which is also a life skill. So. <laughs> you know what, dude? I mean, <laughs> everything can be turned into positive too, right? <laughs> So beat the shit out of my son. Yeah. Now he's a fucking lawyer. There you go. Right? I wonder, oh man. What maybe was... he becomes a boxer. He's good at dodging punches. Dude, I guess, <laughs> dude, there's, and like, you can recover from things. I'm not saying like, there's people that, I, um, I, I agree with you though. Like, I, I, I don't think hitting your kids is the ideal way to live. I mean, there has to be, they have to have some fear of you. Some fear when they're growing that up. That needs to exist. What, but like, so that they were, not even yeah, yeah. respect. Yeah. Just respect it's not something that, that even. They, that you're their parent, yeah. and when you tell them to do something, they go and do it. Yeah, because right? if you don't do it, there will be consequences. But nowadays, it's so much easier. You just take their phone away. Yeah, right. <laughs> that makes, like, yeah. They don't know what to do. Like they're, they're like, like I said, the, the technology is like, oh, I have yeah. no no outside world. What's happening? <laughs> yeah, I they see don't even a lot need to of beat them anymore. <laughs> I think we're in a good time though, like uh, a good time and a bad time. There's pros and cons, obviously, mm. to like social media. I fully believe I'm like fifty fifty. You yeah. know, if I wasn't doing what I do, I probably wouldn't have, like, as much presence on social. I'm kind of losing interest in Facebook already. I'm not on TikTok. It's really just mostly Instagram for me. Yeah, me too. Um, I use Facebook just for Messenger. Yeah. It's because I have so many friends who've been on it since, like, high school. Yeah. Right? TikTok, I kind of try to use, but I never do. And then Instagram, I just started using because I started doing comedy. And I was like, yeah, that's when I got it. Yeah, like before that, I was like, I'm old. I don't need it. Nah. <laughs> I get a lot of work through Facebook, so I don't want to completely remove it from my life. But most of my Facebook posts are just my Instagram posts. You know, yeah, like yeah. I'm not using it how I used it when you it was kid. like the th- yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Social media has changed too, like, but you know what? For kids. It's imp- like some, some, some of the parents are like, oh, I give my kid like half an hour of screen time a day. And I'm like, that's cool. I get it. I'm not saying that's not the right way to do it. Maybe it is. I don't do that. I mean, we just train our kids that like, okay, you've got to do, I give them more like, you've got to read for an hour tonight. I don't care how much screen time you do after that. You've got to make sure you do this and this and this and then do whatever the hell you want. Mm-hmm. Plus I want them to be up to date with what's going on socially in their, in their age group and in their demographics so that they're not lost. Cause like. If you go to school and you're dealing with other people, which like you know, school the schoolyard is right. Mm-hmm. It's a social playground. That's yeah, what yeah. it is. And if you don't know what's going on, you feel like an idiot and you become a loser and you don't know how to deal with things. So you still want your kids to understand what's actually happening and they, to be on top of the, especially now the pop culture mm-hmm. moves so fast. Cause yeah, man. It's like oh, this TikTok video is viral. Oh my god, did you see that? Everyone's talking about you. You're the only one who didn't see it. Yeah. And two days later, by the time you see it, everyone's talking about the next one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would argue. That the most important part, I know obviously grades are important. Let's not take that away. Um, but I think the biggest chunk of importance in school is the social chunk. Like that, those are the most, most of those things are what you're going to use later on down the road. Like there's a lot of stuff that I don't use. You know, the fundamentals are great. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah, you need you the know? fundamentals. Um, I agree, especially with AI now. Yeah, right. Like AI and robotics. I don't think there's going to be jobs that we have today by the time even my kids yeah. are of working age. Yeah. I think that most of the jobs will be sales. They'll be inter- interpersonal jobs where people want to deal with people and not a robot. But to get most things done, I think robots are going to do them. I think AI is going to handle it. So it's going to be a different world. And if people aren't able to socially connect, that's why I like comedy because I'm sure, you know, in two, three years, ChatGPT will be a better comedian than everybody. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. people still, it's, it's one of those interpersonal things where people just still like to see a person, right? And they like to connect. Like it's, It goes back to the crowd work. You connect with the crowd. Can a computer connect with the crowd? Mm-hmm. I, it might be amusing the first time you see it. Like if you had a computer on stage and you started doing crowd work with some guy, it can be interesting, but I don't think it'd be the same connection. It'd be like those... 1970s chess players playing against like computers or something like wow that computer's really smart right yeah I feel like I feel like for me right now I'm kind of planning on how to deal with my daughter in the like I saw a video on uh, Instagram or maybe like my lady shows me TikToks all the fucking time Um, like it's a part of our regular routine do you want to watch some TikToks? 
<laughs> you know? And it's like, okay, so the video was just... It's a simple thing where a dad just like... Or a mom, I don't even know, a family was like, <laughs> you can get the Wi-Fi password when you do X, Y, Z yeah, and kind yeah. of setting things up. So it's really kind of like back in my day, like, like I would get like sent to my room. I mean, outside of like hitting, you know, yeah. like, uh, like it's sent to my room and things like that. Uh, going outside was like the most important thing. Like if I oh, couldn't yeah. go outside, that was, I could stay inside, that, that's watch the, TV. That's where the social but I element just was, right? Yeah. All your friends were outside. You, there was no, like, you couldn't just sit in your room and chat with them. Like my kids sit on Snapchat mm -hmm. and just chat with their friends and all these, these group chats. Yeah. Right. So I, I forced them to go outside. I'm like, get on your bike, go see some friends. Like the last three, four days since it's been nice and warm, they've been gone for like two, three hours at a time. Nice thing though with phones is I can see exactly where they are. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I can track like their phone if I'm like worried. I'm like, what the hell are they? And boom. Oh, okay. Just down the street. Cool. Right? But it's, you know, like they're excited to be outside now. Whereas a lot of kids, like especially, I find boys are worse. Like I have friends who have boys. And like when we were boys, like we were saying, we were outside, we were playing sports. Like I was yeah. in a, like a neighborhood with like 12, 15 boys in it. All around within four years of each other. So we were playing ball hockey and baseball. You have, were and you into video games when you were younger? Yeah, but video games weren't like they are now. No, and it was so different because, like, to play with each other, you had to, like, Get be together, with each other. Right? And the games so were, was, like, yeah. they weren't, they didn't just go on forever. Like, now you go play Call of Duty online, you could play for, like, 15 hours yeah, straight. Man. Yeah. You know, whereas we played, like, yeah. NBA Jam or something, and you'd, like, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes playing. You're like, okay, let's go outside again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, but the boys, they get so into video games now that they'll, they'll actually be, people tell me that they have their friend over and the friend will want to go home so he can be on his system and play video games with them. They don't want to sit next to each other and play. Yeah. They'll be like, oh man, okay, I'll see you later. I'm going to go home so we can, we can play together. That's so weird. Yeah. Video <laughs> games. That part of it is, is uh, Even weird. like, I know people watch people play video games. That's huge, right? It's strange to me too. Like, I don't, I I still get upset when someone else has the controller. I'm like, I want my turn. <laughs> I can't watch people play. But that's like a massive thing, right? I'm just old, I guess. No, yeah. I feel like I'm 38, bro. Like I'm you're, 40. Yeah. So yeah, like we're, we're up group. there. Yeah. Um, people need human interaction, man. You know, even like, murderers and fucking rapists <laughs> and just you know the worst kind of people I think imaginable we're... that's why like in jails like the worst punishment is solitary confinement yeah it's like we're just gonna take people away and you'll go crazy and they do a lot of the time yeah it's true man do you ever go to cuba i haven't been no no so my wife's from cuba i met her there mm. so when we go to cuba the kids turn into 1980s kids within a week because their cousins are there yeah nobody has phones there's yeah. no internet there's like three channels on tv they start chasing chickens and riding bikes and breaking stuff and you know cutting themselves and yeah you know kid shit kid shit the stuff yeah. that we grew up doing, yeah right? yeah it's so crazy yeah. to watch and, and they have fun it's not yeah. like they're not having fun right yeah like, they don't even miss their like technology Right, so I love going to places like that and just being like, even when I go, I just turn my phone off and I'm like, it just feels free. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you met your your wife in Cuba. So I need to know more about this, okay? So like, she was living there and you just went for vacation. Yeah, she was a like a ballerina. Uh huh. So she she went to boarding school from the age of like ten or eleven or something for dance, right? And then she moved to Havana and she she joined some like uh, this company called the TV Ballet of Cuba. So she's on TV and whatever they do for that stuff. I don't really follow the dance world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? But then obviously you make more money at the resorts. So she moved uh, to Kaya Coco because that was closer to where her mom lived. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was working at the resorts as a dancer. So I met her. I met her there. She was a dancer. Wow. And then I started going back all the time. And eventually I, I wore her down. I like that, man. When stars align, though, bro, yeah. imagine. You yeah, know? Yeah. So many things could have been just, like, slightly different, and you guys wouldn't have fucking met, but yeah. you did. That's wicked, man. Love is a beautiful thing. That's so crazy, dude. <laughs> Fuck. I met my lady on fucking Tinder. See, I never even got to... The, I don't even think Tinder existed. I mean, Tinder was weird years, to 15 me. 15 years, dude. man. Bro, I, I avoided it for so long, and I got... Got out of a relationship and didn't look at women for like a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And just uh, one of my, well, my bud, like a good friend, 
and uh, our boss, like we worked together, they were like, they both found their ladies on Tinder. And I was like, look, dude, if I wanted to fuck, I could fuck, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's not, and I'm not saying that cocky. I'm just like, I don't want that, bro. Like I'm, I'm older now. I fucking, I just, you know, and so they're like, no, you can. And they convinced me to end up doing it. And I was like, I was on Tinder for like, maybe like two days. Oh yeah? You met right away? Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. And like the first time like we connected, like she called, she's like, can I like call you? And I was like, oh man, I'd so prefer that. Like, I don't want to do this yeah, shit yeah. over to, it's weird to me, you yeah. know? But I even get found mad. It. I even get irritated with people right now mm. when they over text me. I'm like, a text should be something that can be said in one sentence. Right. If it needs to be more than one sentence, yeah, yeah, yeah. just call me. Yeah. It's so much, unless, unless I'm like, I'm busy, please just text right now or something. <laughs> I understand like sometimes you're in a meeting or a family event and you can't talk, but most of the time people are just like send these long paragraphs. I'm like, dude, just, I, I just called him. Like, I didn't even read what you wrote. Why not? I don't have half an hour to read your novel. Yeah. Just tell me what you yeah. want to say. I think I said you, so I better. had a bunch of shit to say when I, because we fucking were supposed to record this a couple times. Yeah. And then the last time we were supposed to do it, I fucking left my camera mm. at SoCap. It was kind of like a, yeah, yeah. like a thing. And so like, but that's yeah. different. Like, cause that's like a more of a business interaction, right? You were like, okay, well, this is how we're going to do it, blah, blah, blah. Which is like, so I can read it and internalize No, but it. I like voice. I think I sent you a voice oh, yeah, you thing. Did, yeah, it, was yeah. like a, it was like a minute long. Yeah. Like if I type that out, fuck that. I, sh- I started using the voice to text thing now. <laughs> oh, yeah? And, and sometimes it's like, I don't even read it and I send it. Sometimes I it's look horrible. Back, like, yeah. The odd word sometimes. It doesn't <laughs> make sense. <laughs> Most of the time it's pretty good. But I just try, I, I hate texting all the time. People are like, I'm like, dude, don't be 12 years old. Just fucking call me. It's so much easier I got my phone on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you want to get into top five now, dude? Sure. Okay, so... All right. Let's start with... Uh, let's start with comedians. I'm top curious. five comedians. Yeah. I'll, I'll say mine first. Okay, I've done them like quite yeah, a few yeah. times. Um, Rogan. Joe Rogan. Dave Chappelle. Mark Forward. He's a Canadian guy. Like a lesser known dude. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Um, George Carlin. And Bill Burr. And like, uh, it's a good list. I mean, there's, yeah, like yeah, you, I feel so like hard, you could right? do like a top 20 and they would all, <laughs> top 50 and they would all be solid, you know? Yeah. And I try to avoid like local comedians because I just don't want to. Do with the drama? You know, yeah, <laughs> I just don't want to get, go there. I like Paul Gano. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just. <laughs> yeah. You didn't say me, dude. Yeah. Um, for me, so Bilber was on my list till I saw him live this year. Yeah. Eh? I Why? Saw... Wasn't good? It was just boring. Oh, wow. I haven't seen him live, so... So, I saw, I saw him in Niagara Falls at uh, whatever it is there by the casino there. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it, I think part of it was when you go to a st- like a big 10,000 person room, again, it's no connection. You, I was watching him on the screen, basically. Yeah, yeah. But he was doing a lot of jokes I'd already seen. Yeah. Which I didn't like. And then he did a lot of like talking. He even said, he goes, I didn't really get to my set tonight. I'm just chatting a lot. Which kind of takes away from it, I guess. But I still, he's still definitely top level guy, right? But the next day, me and my wife went and saw Jeremy Hotz. Mm-hmm. You know, you know Hotz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were falling off our seats, like. And I saw Hotz in Mississauga when I was like twenty one. Yeah, he's so been doing it for a bit. Forever, he's yeah. Canadian and then I legend. met him. Then I met him when I started doing comedy. I met him in January. Yeah. At comedy bar. Okay. Okay. And we chatted until like. 1.30 in the morning I drove him back to his hotel and everything he gave me his number and we we, we talk once in a while super cool guy but that's not yeah, why yeah. I just think he's funny yeah 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 right um, definitely Carlin I, w- I wouldn't even thought about it didn't pop into my head but like when you say Carlin like yeah <laughs> right um, and what a body of work oh my god like that's the thing like when you when you sing comedy like it's, it's also like generational like if it's the 90s it's Chris Rock there but new Chris Rock stuff it's okay, yeah. but I wouldn't put it at the top of my list. Yeah, right. Eighties maybe Eddie Murphy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So even th- even for me, like I still like Chappelle, but like I like his earlier stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. His new stuff's more just more. Uh, Every special just seems like it's like less jokes. Part two of the last one and part three because it's like they, a lot of the same kind of content. Mm-hmm. He's approaching different things and he's saying different words, but it's all like it's it's just more predictable now. I feel like. I like Ian Bag a lot. Oh, I don't know. No, his, his so he's got a special on Amazon that he did in like twenty eighteen or something. He's gonna be in Toronto in 
October, I think. Beg? B-A-G-G, Beg. Okay. He's a Canadian guy from Vancouver. All right. He lives in the States. Dude's like, his crowd work is insane. Like, you should, if you want to get, ever want to get good at crowd work, just watch some of his stuff and just like, it makes you think like, okay. Because he doesn't do that typical crowd work, right? It's the way he does it. He's got so much energy. Um, I really like Canadian comics. Like, when they, especially when the ones that go to the States because all the great ones leave, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Um, who else? That's, you said three. Let's see, who else? There's so many. There is. <laughs> There's just so many. I'll, I'll go with Eddie Murphy to be, you know. Eddie Murphy, solid. 80, 80s Eddie Murphy and Mark Norman right now is definitely just crushing. Yeah. Yeah. You got a lady that you like? If I was saying a lady, uh, I would go with uh, Adrian Appalucci. I don't know her. She's like a lesser known. She's like currently, well, I don't know if she's still doing it, but she was doing a lot of opening stuff for Louis C.K. for a while. Uh, lady wise, like, I don't mind. I, I didn't like her at first, but I like Eliza Schlesinger. Oh, yeah. She's all right. At first, I didn't like her, and then I started to like, watch her stuff more and start get into it. Like some of the female comics. Um, there's a couple of American women whose names I can't remember right now were like Comedy Cellar or like regulars. Yeah, yeah. Like anyone who's on this comedy store or comedy cellar or anything like that is a regular is going to be funny. Bottom line. There's a reason that they're regulars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? But just like you said, there's so many people. It's hard to, hard to pick just five. And sometimes it's a joke that you just love from somebody, right? Like Burke Kreischer was like my favorite comic for a while. Yeah. Until I saw the Machine movie. I was just so disappointed. Did you ever see that movie? I haven't yet. Don't. No. It'll ruin Burt Kreischer for you. It's such a bad movie. I kind of know what, <laughs> like, I feel like I know what it's kind of going to bring to the table. It's like, it feels like it's going to be like some something like of like a Pauly Shore movie. Just a, like a modern day. Kind of. Like that it's, kind of. I don't, it just had, it was just dumb. Yeah. Like it was just. The, that oh, whole the, joke oh, is great though. The that, joke's the amazing. Joke. I've watched that machine joke like a hundred times, yeah. right? But. The and, and his specials are hilarious, mm-hmm. but that movie he's was just like one so of the best rough. storytellers, right? Oh, now. absolutely. Bert's yeah. all, Bert's amazing, but just that movie just sucks so much. He even stopped talking about it after it came out. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's like, what movie? <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so you build you build homes. Yeah, that's your thing. Um. I don't obviously own this place because we live in a basement. But we're talking about. I also don't own a home. You don't. No. Shit. Fucking wild world. The economy I, I, is in I, ruins. It is. I, I, <laughs> I have owned a home. Okay. I've owned a few homes. Okay. I don't own a home. But you were so. The question was going to be. Yeah. Okay. Well, even still, even if you you build them, so you yeah. kind of know. And I was a realtor so, before. So I'm not. Oh, you were. Yeah, for a while. I was okay. Real so this is great, dude. Um, this is even better. Uh, things to look for when buying, like. Uh, a home not even necessarily like a new place but like what are so this is, this is, I'm gonna go a different way with the answer okay okay don't buy a home oh okay interesting so I look at I look at the numbers okay I'm like I look we were talking about earlier with the producing mm-hmm. I'm a numbers guy the cost of a home doesn't equate to any value right now like if you want to buy a house let's say let's say forget about a house like you want to buy a condo mm-hmm. okay a two-bedroom condo, because it's two, the two of you and your daughter. In Mississauga, minimum you're going to be paying is like $650,000. Okay? You put down 20%, um, and let's say your mortgage is going to be three grand a month or something. And then on top of that, you're going to have condo fees of six $700 a month. Right? Mm-hmm. So the numbers don't make sense. If you were to like, and you look at every home you buy as if you were a landlord. Don't look at it as if you're gonna live there, because that's how you look at the math, okay? From a math point of view, and for you know the last hundred years, everyone's had this buy a home, buy a home, buy, and and it was a great thing to do. Like if mm-hmm. you bought a home in the '80s, the '90s, even the early 2010s, they went up in value so much. But we're at that level now where they can't go up more, and that's why the market's starting to topple, because one, people can't afford to buy them. The mortgages are too high, and if you rent them out, the rents are too high. People can't afford rents. Mm-hmm. Like in Brampton, people are now renting out beds, like they used to do in Japan. Like you can rent a bed in a dorm room for six hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars a month. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. So what I suggest to people, if you have money, like let's say you have a down payment, I don't know, like let's call it hundred thousand dollars down payment. Okay, 
instead of buying a house in Toronto for or the GTA for six seven hundred thousand dollars because that's probably what you can get with that down payment, take that. Look at places like Spain, Portugal, Italy. Okay, we have two places in Spain. So right in the southern tip, which is basically the most southern part of Europe, one of the most southern parts of Europe, you can buy a two-bedroom condo for like 150,000 euros, okay? And when you look at the numbers compared to a two-bedroom condo, and change that to dollars, it's called $200,000 Canadian, okay? So you look at those numbers and you're like, wow, with the massive disparity. And the crazy thing is, over there, you put that on Airbnb, so we have them on Airbnb, a two-bedroom condo there will make 1,200 euros, so that's called 1,500 bucks, a week. And we'll rent it 48 weeks of the year. <laughs> so you're making like a 25% return on investment there. And you, you start, you, like let's say every three, four years you save up money, you buy another one. By the time you're ready to retire in 20 years, you have five, six of these things. It's, if you're making six, 7,000 euros a week in retirement, and those, it's already paid off in the first two years anyways, so there's no mortgage payments or anything like that left, that's just a great retirement. Whereas you can't do that here. The only thing you can do that kind of with is, is cottages, mm -hmm. but it's a four-month season. You know, your May, end of May, so June, July, August, September. Like you get a little bit of May, a little bit of October. You might get the odd rental in the winter, but it it, it just pays for the mortgage. And the mortgage is, you're paying, again, a cottage in Ontario for anything that you can even rent out is minimum 500000 mm -hmm. right? Minimum. So now you're paying off a $500,000 investment and all you're making, like you're not making a profit annually. You go to Italy, you go to these kind of places, and all of Europe. So you get the people from Northern Europe, like the Brits, the, the um, all the UK people, the Germans, the Norwegian people, like the Scandinavians, all that, even Russians. They'll all come down to these places because the southernmost tip, they, they can't go to the Caribbean because the Caribbean is like a 16-hour flight for them, right? So where do they go? They go to the south of Spain, south of Italy, mm -hmm. Greece, Portugal. So you buy places there, and they're so cheap, and they're always rented. So you invest your money in places that's going to make you money. Because you're still in the market. Mm -hmm. And over here, you rent a house that you want. Because here, landlords have more rights than, than owners. <laughs> right? So why would you go on the other side of it and have something where you're an owner of something and you have less rights? You have more problems. You have to take care of fixing things. You have to pay taxes on it. You have this. You have that. And this, this country is just expensive enough as it is. So if you were to buy a house, like the house where, where I just moved into a new place. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a tiny little house. Um, but it's like right in South Burlington, like the best neighborhood in Burlington. My kids go to school there, so I want to stay in that neighborhood. And we're paying 4200 bucks a month, okay, which is expensive. But if I were to buy that house right now, it probably would be like $1.6 which means my mortgage would be about eight nine $9,000 a month. That's <laughs> so I can live in the same house for almost half the price of the purchase. And that money that you're saving... Start start saving it and invest it into places. That, and maybe South of Europe's not going to be great for forever. But right now, that's the place. People say Costa Rica. Yeah, Costa Rica's okay, but I think it's already got really expensive. And South America, for me, is just a little scary because I don't know what day a drug cartel is just going to run through Costa Rica and take over everything because they have no army. Mm. Right? I don't I don't know anything about Costa Rica. It might be fantastic. I'm just not the guy to ask. I don't know. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, people like Florida for the same reason. It's cheap. But the thing with Florida is I'm just not a huge guy in American politics. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather not be in the States. I just don't know what's going to happen. It seems uneasy to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we have a... We, like the, we started in Spain because we like some a family friend passed away and he didn't have any family and left us a unit. And for like 10 years, we did nothing with it. We just went there once a year. Then mm -hmm. we started putting it on Airbnb. We're like, wow, this is amazing. And then last year, we bought another place. And then we're, that's our goal now, just to start building up units over there. Mm -hmm. right? But I, I just think, like, even here, if you want to stay in Canada... Montreal, way better investment. Like the exact same house that you get in Toronto in Montreal is about 25% cheaper. But yeah, that's what I would look at. I, that's how I look at things. I look at them from a numerical. That's why I didn't do well as a realtor. <laughs> <laughs> like, guys, don't buy this. <laughs> Shit. That was a way better answer to a way better question than I had. Very informative, sir. Oh, that's uh, what I do every day. <laughs> no, I dig it. Okay. Uh, that was a lot to take in. I and I watch it back this. later. <laughs> I know. I'm definitely going to. It's definitely interesting. So, like, okay, we'll get back to the top five. I just have, like, how how often, how do you maintain the properties? And, like, how often do you go down there? So, like, we'll go down there, like, once a year. My wife's going next week mm. with my mom. Because those two properties are my mom's, mm -hmm. right? So, we're going to start buying. My wife 
because she's Cuban, Cubans can get Spanish passports if they can prove that they're of Spanish heritage. Mm-hmm. And her grandma got hers, so she's got the paperwork, so she's going to go get her Spanish passport just to make life easier for us. Mm-hmm. But we usually go down once a year. We have a cleaning lady down there, and she kind of maintains it. We handle it on Airbnb. But we might, we're looking at starting a business because my mom's going to move to Spain where she just manages them. Gotcha. So she, we'll see how that goes. But That's fucking cool, but man. Look, look at, when I'm talking about the GTA, one thing that I, I was looking at with a realtor buddy of mine a couple of months ago is you look at the GTA, and then you look at Manhattan. Right, Manhattan's like the epicenter of North America, right? They're the most like everyone thinks of North America where they go, New York City, right? Most expensive place in, in North America, give or take. Mm. Might be LA some days, right? But LA or New York and Toronto are like the same city. Toronto's like a mini version of New York, and Toronto's now barely cheaper. But the crazy thing is, if you go online, I, I went on Realtor.org, the American version, mm-hmm. and you go, it goes Manhattan. Uh, Bronx and then Yonkers so let's imagine the Bronx is Mississauga and then Yonkers is I don't know Oakville or Milton or something the drop off from leaving Manhattan to the Bronx is like 10% and then from the Bronx to Yonkers is like 15% you leave Toronto and you go to Oakville the prices don't change you go to Burlington the prices don't change that's four cities over mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't make sense like yeah. the, the, the metrics are just crazy I'm like let's go move to like Yonkers and be like 10 minutes outside of Manhattan <laughs> yeah right things to think about you it's know? wild like the, the real estate market here just doesn't make sense to me and it's it's just overinflated and it, as far as I'm concerned it has to implode fair <laughs> fair you heard it here you seem like you know a lot about what you're talking about you used to be a realtor <laughs> well just just my opinion yeah <laughs> that's fair man that's yeah. you know that's what we're looking for here um all right, let's do superheroes. All right. Do you want to do that one? I like you want to start with that one? Yeah. So it's favorite superheroes? Yeah. So again, that's changed over the years, right? Grew up, it was Wolverine, you know, being Canadian. Yeah. yeah. And he was just such a badass in the X-Men. Oh, yeah. Right? Um, and Batman, because, you know, all the Batman movies were great growing up. The, mm-hmm. I haven't, the recent ones weren't weren't so good. <laughs> the uh, what's that guy name? His name, the new Batman. Uh, Robert Pattinson. Yeah, that guy? yeah, it's okay. I like the movie. I don't like him as Batman. Yeah, he just looks so frail. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I don't yeah. know. It wasn't another chance. Oh no, I'm not even saying that. I'm just he might get bigger, maybe. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I guess I am saying that. Let's yeah. you know, but uh, the first one. I don't know. Well, I'm excited Dark, for the Dark they're making... Knight ones were awesome. Yeah, they were good. Right. I'm excited for the they're doing uh, Penguin show. Did you saw the one with Robert Pattinson and had Colin Farrell? Yeah. As the Penguin, they're doing like a, a show whole show based on that Penguin. I think that'll be cool. But Penguin was like a big part of that uh, Gotham show. That yeah, was yeah, yeah. He Gotham was, but that was like, I, and I like that show, but that was like, it was a little different. They had like their own kind of thing that they were doing, and that's fine. I think everyone should have some sort of like freedom when working with whatever and create like kind of their own thing. So I didn't really, I used to really, really like Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Back before, you know, he got destroyed in this crappy movie. <laughs> I mean, I think he's been redeemed from what I hear. I don't, I, I haven't watched, but I, I know that they did a TV show version. The Nicolas Cage movies weren't, they were okay. Weren't They're great. Right. The first one was all right. The second one, I was like, nah, I don't know. I don't I'm, like it. I'm a big Avengers fan. I, I like all the Marvel stuff. Everyone complains about it. Yeah. But I'm like, it's fun. I just look at it from a point of view. It's, it's, a, it's a fun superhero movie. They're silly. Yeah, yeah. They're fun. I just go and have a laugh. Like, I didn't even mind the Marvels. Everyone hated it so much. And I was like, meh. I watched it. It was fun. I didn't, I didn't look at it like, oh, it's a serious superhero movie. I got to get really in like, So many of my friends are like, oh, it was terrible. This, and I was like, it was okay. I haven't seen that one yet. It's okay. I, like, I didn't go into it with the, with the thing in my head that it was going to be, you know, like something epic. Yeah. I think Epi- he, expectations can do a lot. Right? You know? And that's it. Yeah, like, like, I like Doctor Strange, like the Doctor Strange recent movies. I like the, the new Doctor Strange stuff. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man was just phenomenal. Just the whole persona that he brought to the table. Yeah. Right? So I guess that would be the top five, I guess, in right. my lifetime. <laughs> All right, I dig it. Yeah. Um. I would say Batman. Yeah. The Ninja Turtles. Oh yeah. As a group, I gotta put them in there. Um. 
I'm going Red Hood. Red Hood? You could argue where he is. I consider him a good guy. Uh, Arsenal. And then Spider-Man. See, the thing I don't like about Spider-Man, I just find Peter Parker to be so boring. Do you tell me he's supposed to be? <laughs> I like him when I he's Spider-Man, little, yeah. but I, like, whenever I watch the Spider-Man movies and stuff, I'm like, he's just so vanilla. Like, he yeah. doesn't have any like anything to him. You yeah, know? he's just a fucking nerdy high school yeah, kid. Yeah, he's nearly... That's what he's supposed to be, right? Yeah, but like, yeah. as, now that I'm an adult, I don't like him. As, when I was a kid, I loved that's Spider-Man, fair. right? That's fair. Did you, did you watch the new X-Men 97 yet? I haven't watched it, no. It's pretty good. No, I don't have pretty Disney good. Plus. I boycotted Disney. Well, you got a little uh, one, so you're going to have it soon, I'm sure. Oh, fuck, man. I do I Yeah, that's <laughs> interesting. Um, I want to watch it, though. I was a big fan of, like, the they old, old, yeah, old yeah. ones, so I definitely There's only four episodes out so far, so you got time anyway. All right. Let the whole season come out before you waste money. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like it's all right. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good so far. I've heard a lot of, like, newer... People that are, I guess, like, newer X-Men fans... Just complaining about Cyclops' role, and obviously I haven't seen it, but uh, I just think something important to note is that Cyclops, what although Wolverine is the best X Men, I would argue one of them War Gambit, Deadpool if you include him maybe mm-hmm. in the X Men, but uh, fuck man, Cyclops was the like he's the leader. He's yeah, he's, he's always the leader. been the leader. He's the leader, and he's always been unlikable because he's the leader, and everyone wanted Wolverine to be the leader. They just made him such a bitch in, like, the last movies. Like, yeah, yeah, they did. So, I don't know. I'll watch that's it. I'll definitely with, check that, it out. That's the problem with X-Men. There's so many characters that people will get, like, so riled up. And again, like, just suspend your belief and just watch it and enjoy it for what it is. They're superhero movies. Have fun with it. All right? So I try and tell people. I want, like, because I know that uh, Marvel now has the rights to the X-Men, so I want them to kind of bring it back. Cause well, I think that's the plan, the right? first, The first couple X-Men movies are really good. Isn't, isn't uh, Wolverine coming back in, like... Uh, oh, yeah, in the in Deadpool? Deadpool? That, that looks that'll sick. Be, that'll be cool. Yeah. Um, okay, let's do hockey teams. You're a big hockey guy? Are you? I'm a, big, I'm a, I'm a hockey that's, guy. That's your sport? Yeah, well, if you were picking a if sport? I was going to pick a sport, yeah. It's the only sport I all watch. Right. All right, all right. I grew up playing baseball and being obsessed with it. Mm-hmm. And then, I don't know, one day I just started liking hockey, and that was that. All right, <laughs> all right. Um, but, I'll go first. I'm not yeah. super huge. Um, and I don't know. I used to be really, you know what, man, if I'm being honest, I lost a lot of interest. Like, uh, when I was younger, I was, I would say I was like in middle school and there was like a strike. There was like an NHL strike. And from that point, I lost a lot of interest. It just like, it did something to me. It's not like, okay. It's not like a situation where... Like, you guys are making a lot of money. <laughs> you guys are making a lot of money doing the thing that you love. And the doctors that take care of you, um, that went to school for X amount of time, yeah. they're getting paid, like, a fraction. When, really, they should be getting paid more. Let's be real. Yeah. You're entertain Like, you're athletes. You're entertainers. You're for entertainment. But if you look at hockey compared to the other sports, they mm. make peanuts. Oh, okay. That's... Have you seen a basketball player or baseball player's salaries? I don't. I Dude, don't really... Dude, they make, like... They get hundreds of millions of dollars contracts. Yeah. Like, I think the big, the, like, some guy just got signed, uh, some Japanese guy this year. I can't remember exactly what he made, but something like 80, 90 million dollars a year, baseball player. Yeah. Like, the, I think the biggest NHL contract's like 13. Huh. But I think, but then, like, even. It doesn't happen to baseball for me. Like, the 96 strike. Yeah. When that happened, I just lost interest. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You just kind of, especially. And you went like, to hockey. Is that what happened? Like, that was that got, when you got into hockey? I, I was always a little bit into it, yeah. but my parents were like immigrants, so they were like, you're not playing hockey, that's dangerous. Okay. And so they made me play baseball, so I was into it, right? Hockey I really got into when I was like in university, because I was living in Toronto, mm-hmm. and I just had a bunch of friends, we'd go to the bars and watch the games, yeah. and, you know, you kind of get into things, right? And I started playing hockey as an adult. Okay. Right, so, but I'm just like, it's very simple, a favorite team is just the Leafs, I just... I don't watch other teams. Okay, fair. I'm just a Leafs fan. I'm That's home, it. Every sport. All right. Like I'm, I listen. Like I don't mind. Like if I had to pick a backup team, maybe the Calgary Flames. Because yeah. like, I like Theo Fleury in the '90s. That's fair. No, I'm, I I can appreciate that home team kind of shit. I like. Yeah, that. like if I moved, maybe I'd you know if I moved to New York, maybe I'd become a Rangers fan somewhat because you know home team if you're going to go support, but it's still be a yeah. Leafs fan because I grew up yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. You know. I feel you. 
Yeah. Okay, so like I I, I put down five, um, right. but I don't really watch it. I'm gonna be honest. I just think about the teams that I really mm-hmm. liked when I used to watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, Toronto's obviously my number one. I'm also the same. Like I don't really watch the only sports I really like are like combat sports, wrestling, UFC, boxing, like that kind of stuff. That's what I like watch. But uh, if a Toronto team makes it into the playoffs, I'm there. I'm I'm yeah. on the bandwagon. Yeah, and I'm there. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so Vancouver's my number two. I used to live there. Um, and I, you know, the, the Pavel Bure, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, era was, was like big era. for me. Yeah. Uh, Edmonton, Edmonton has a part in my heart because that's when I first got into Curtis Joseph, who was like my favorite goalie back mm-hmm. then, or still, even still, yeah. uh, Detroit and Colorado. Again, like if you think about the times when I watch these, you kind of Joe put the Sackett teams together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Forsberg. They're good teams. And man, Patrick Wall was in the team. Yeah, at that dude. Time too. Yeah, the Colorado. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're a crazy team. All right, and we'll end with inspiring entrepreneurs. I feel like we're gonna have different ones here. Okay, so I'll go first. Okay. Um, um, cause like mine are more. Mine are more. Um, I guess unconventional like i don't i don't think when you think of the names that i'm going to say for the most part you're going to think entrepreneurs but this is like for me there's like a couple things that i need to check like Mm. for for the inspiring and the like for especially for the inspiring part right for me like you gotta make you know create a name like a brand um i like people that you know do it without compromising their integrity i think that's very important um I think obviously you want to be successful. I think success is, you know, defined by everyone, you know, differently. But uh, let's just say, you know, successful. And uh, my number one, I would say, is Joe Rogan. I think. uh, And also, I guess on my thing, something that, because I'm this way, um, something that else is important that I kind of left out is like doing a, doing all the things they love, Do you know, doing multiple things. It's not just like, don't get me wrong. Like there's things to be said about s- someone who puts their effort into just one thing and just becomes like a guru of that thing. Um, my favorite and the people that I, I'm inspired by because I'm so interested in different things and I like, I want to mm-hmm. be a ref. I want to do comedy. I got the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Like even like the father thing, even now, like, you know, I'm following more dads on social media yeah. and shit. Like, they're inspiring me. But yeah. um, Joe Rogan's my number one because he just does all the things that he loves. Mm-hmm. And, like, acting, uh, the UFC, uh, you know, the announcing stuff, and then the comedy. He was also, like, you know, obviously Fear Factor, like, that kind of thing. But he just, he does everything he loves, and he did it his way, and... You could argue now. I guess he's not on exclusively Spotify anymore. His podcast isn't, right? He's back yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So I would just so, yeah, he's my number one. I'm going Gordon Ramsay. Like I'm a chef, yeah. like trained, okay. like uh, you know. So uh, someone like him, who's like a household name. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think people maybe forget that like it wasn't <laughs> always that way, and like he really like he you know put himself out there and started also. I like people, um, I like a little struggle, you know? I like a little struggle yeah. in one story. Like, it's, it's just, they're more interesting than people yeah, just who just, like, rich, made it know, happen kind of, easy, yeah. you know? Like, um, don't get me wrong. Like, we can argue who's a, t- whatever, businessman. Like, Trump's a businessman, but, like, I don't, he, I, I don't he think he, started I don't from think, a real good spot. Yeah, I don't, think, you know? I don't think if he was born poor, he'd have very much money. Oh, you know? He would <laughs> never have been the president, for no. sure. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm going with Chappelle. It's my number three. What's Chappelle uh, do for his first business? I mean, does he have, like, an empire? Well, I just think or? he's, like, the brand, just, the C, brand, like, like, who him. he is. Yeah, okay. like, a lot of... When I look at this, I consider all of these people artists. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's not necessarily, like, I'm not coming at it from um, necessarily a money perspective. Although you could argue well, everyone well on the list are very financial. Well yeah. yeah, very well off. Um, but Chappelle, just being who he is and uh, leaving, coming back, just people that aren't into comedy know who Chappelle is. Mm. Um, my number four, this is a weird one, but, like, when I really think about it, 
there's a lot that inspires me, dude. I'll even get on to that at the end. But, like, Insane Clown Posse is my number four. Not really into the music. I'll so be real. you were never a juggalo? Um, like, no. <laughs> never painted my face. Never yeah. did that stuff. Um, I've listened I, I like to, like, bands. There's a, there's a There's a handful of songs. Like, if we were doing you a top five... Twisted? Insa- oh yeah, I, I, I would argue they're better. better. I'd like Twisted yeah, yeah, yeah. better than ICP. Yeah, I never saw either of them. To be but honest. the thing is, like even that, like Twisted is just like they're a branch of what ICP built. Yeah, I really, re- even though I'm not super huge into them, I know what they've done. I know they make movies and they fucking are into wrestling and they make music and they're doing all these things that that they found their fans. You know, like they built whatever you want to consider an empire like they got it and they built it from like absolutely nothing yeah and although like it's very niche like they seem happy you know they see like i i I respect the hustle you know and uh again it's just doing all the things you're doing all these things that you love you didn't compromise who you were Mm -hmm. you're you're successful at it like they just they check all the boxes um (sighs) <sighs> number five is hard and like because i could say like you inspire me dude like and you, you know like just your you know starting comedy or even like what you were just talking about like the the real to world and like that kind of stuff like i find in, inspiration from a lot of people there's a mm-hmm. lot of comedians that i find inspiration from wrestlers that are just that i trained with that are now like Did you put Vince fucking McMahon on the list cameron because that guy changed the wrestling world. You know, sure. um, there's a... Th- Even if you don't like him, as far as not, as an entrepreneur, from a business standpoint, he crushed. Yeah. Like, yeah. He, he's... He yeah, crushed, yeah. As, yeah, from yeah. a business standpoint. Again, he, de- he definitely started in a decent position, but, like, where they were... Like, when you t- look at where uh, WWF was when it started and when he took over to, like, now, like, it's pretty undeniable. I just... Um, he doesn't check the inspiring box for me just because, yeah. uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff go on about him right now. Okay. I didn't, like, I he don't got, know oh, yeah, dude. So, like, so you're not a P. Diddy fan either. Don't oh, like his oh, That kind of shit. <laughs> yeah, but that, yeah, along those lines, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, so it's yeah. like, ah. Eh. Epstein's not on your list either. What? You know, P. Diddy, <laughs> if it, like, P. Diddy could, you could argue if he didn't do all that crazy shit because he's, like, he's got a different thing going on. Yeah, he had a lot of stuff. You know? Surprised he did all that stuff, to be honest, but you never know, right? But, my number yeah. five is it's, it's, this is weird. You might even not consider him an uh, entrepreneur because, I mean, John Cena. I'll just say that a wrestler. Um, I had to, I felt like I needed to stick a wrestler on, and I didn't want to do The Rock because like it's too cliche. He is, and like John, uh, John Cena said that he's where he is because The Rock inspired him. Yeah, right? which is wild, right? Yeah, which is um, fair. They both done awesome. Yeah, they both done. That's like, he's got a great successful. superhero too. What's his What's his superhero name again? Oh yeah, John Cena's Peacemaker. Peacemaker is awesome. Amazing. The TV show is so, so good. good. So good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so who you got, sir? So I'm not gonna put them in any specific order. Okay. But uh, Henry Ford. Okay. Okay. So I read his biography, and dude was just like a mad genius. Yeah. Yeah. He started with like. Pretty much nothing. Invented a. He invented the modern engine, really. Like, there were similar engines out there, some stuff going around. Like, people were all kind of working on it at the same time. But he just outdueled every other automaker in the world at the time. I did see that Ford v. Ferrari movie. He was dead by then, I think. Oh, okay. Or at least very old. Yeah. Yeah, But he, like, he was a. He was just like a crazy genius. And he was. He was a savant too in some ways. Like he knew, like he even said one of his quotes was, the factory of the future will only have two employees, a man and a dog. There'll be a man there to to, to, to make sure none of the machines break and a dog to bite him if he touches anything. <laughs> and he said that in like the 1930s or something. Yeah. Right? He created the, he created the um, assembly line so that you can create, like build things faster. Yeah. He created the five day work week. Before that, like, before that, he, um, you know, people worked seven days a week. Like, you, you, you see those old movies, like the Great Depression, where people are, like begging to go to work and stuff like that, right? And like, you know, they're like, ah, oh, you get a dollar a day, and if you're injured, you. He he started hiring um, inmates, 
He said, you know, let's give these guys a second chance. Mm -hmm. So he built villages around his plants. He'd bring people in. He started educating the families of the people who worked for him because he wanted them to have good lives. Like, he paid for a lot of things. He said, you know what, like, I'm going to... People would leave GM, which was the biggest car manufacturer at the time, the price still one of them, obviously, mm -hmm. and beg for jobs at Ford because you get five-day work weeks. It was, a, it was assembly plants. We the one guy trying to build an entire car with, by himself. They'd, they'd get education for their family. They had, gave them some sort of health care plans. You know, he taught people to read. He gave people second chances. It was just so much that he did that changed the whole world mm -hmm. that we don't realize, right? Game and, changer. Yeah. I want to say number five, Steve Jobs. I feel like you're Steve, coming at it from... And I was like, while well, you're talking... Yeah, Steve thinking, Jobs is a badass too, for there's, sure. There's another about one. Me. Wozniak as well. Yeah, for sure. The Apple guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, who else? Uh, Kevin O'Leary. Okay, okay. Like, I know people hate him, but that's... Well, they just hate him his because character. of his, like, persona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But, again, he's another guy who... I wouldn't say he changed the world in any way. But he's come at it, like, from like from what you were saying. He's built himself an empire on his new on his brand. Mm -hmm. Right? So he started making... He's a Canadian guy. Yeah. So I want, to put, I want to put a Canadian on the list, too. Oh, yeah. Right? He's from... I think he's from Montreal originally. lives in Toronto. But he... He started off with, like, uh, learning software. Right, and he had no skills. Like he didn't, do, he didn't uh, develop it. He's a sales guy. He found a guy who who's a programmer at the time who was making something. He goes, look, let me partner with you. I will sell this. He sold the shit out of it. Then he sold it to Mattel. Mattel screwed everything up and bankrupted him. He got on TV, built himself a character, and started an empire. Like he started over. And like, I respect the hustle. Of, like when you crash and you just keep going. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, who else? I like Warren Buffett just because I think he's a G. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's really an entrepreneur because he's like a stock trader. So it's not like he's, but he's, he like he looks at the numbers, he invests in businesses, he changes businesses. Cool thing about him that I like is that he still lives in the same house from 1970 that he bought, which is like an old back split. And the guy's like, you know, top five richest guys in the world all the time. Mm -hmm. He still drives like a 1970s car. He doesn't care. Coolest thing with him and his ex-wife, she divorced him because she wanted all the fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. She moved to LA. Well, she didn't divorce him. She just left him. She found him a new woman to take care of him, <laughs> and she just goes to all the events with him. <laughs> so she's a G. She's like, <laughs> yeah, okay. she's, like, she's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not leaving and just taking half of what you have now, <laughs> right? But that's pretty cool. Um, I was gonna say like along the lines of uh, who's the first guy you had? Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. I was gonna say Tom Segura. Okay, yeah, that's a very good, yeah. Right, because Tom Segura has, like, built a comedy empire that most people, like, people know about Rogan because of the podcast. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tom Segura has one, too, but it's not as big, obviously, right? Yeah, but, I mean, he also has, like, I mean... They're on the same group. Like, they're they the same have, crew, right? They are, but, like, Segura is, like, the, the, your mom's house is, like, they're growing. Like, they do podcasts out of there. Like, they're, like... Oh, man. That's a good one. Tom Segura's a good He's one. He's built, like, a comedy empire. Yeah. Like, he's very comedy-focused, right? And he does it in Spanish and English, too. Like, he's built, like, a big, a big thing. So, definitely him. And who else? It's, it's hard, right? Because, like you said, there's so many inspiring people out there. Yeah, I came at it from, like, a weird angle, I feel like. And, like, I thought about, like, oh, like, I don't know. I, I just, obviously, if you I was think gonna about pick, who like, the richest people, like, we could go yeah, with, like, a lot go, of those. you can go with, like, you know, Jeff Elon Bezos, Musk or Elon Musk. Bezos. Yeah, those I guys used, don't really inspire, like, they're doing it and they check sunboxes. They're successful. You can't argue what I, what that. What I like about Bezos, see, what I don't like about Elon and what I like about Bezos is, Bezos, they both made super crazy money. Mm -hmm. Good for them. Right? And they did, they worked hard and, you know, they were both broke. Well, Elon started with money. His dad was, like, a diamond mine owner or something. Bezos was, like, you know, um, upper middle class kind of guy. He had like a job at a stock market thing or something. And he started his garage, went broke, and then built it up and power to him. And apparently he was a prick to work for and Elon is too. But Elon's a prick on TV. He's always in your face being a dick. Right? That's what I don't like about him. Just shut the well, fuck he's up. not. He just, and, and with him, it doesn't seem like... I used to like Elon. <laughs> it's sort of, I used to like him, right? Yeah. And then he just got crazier and crazier. Whereas Bezos, I'm kind of liking him more now because he just... He's then, getting more chill, if he, anything. He's so chill. Yeah, he's, dude. Like, he's like, I don't need to be dealing with this shit. I'm just going to like bang super hot chicks and hang out on super yachts and have a good life. Why do I need yeah. to like, deal with your bullshit? Yeah. Right? Whereas Elon just wants... He's like, he's kind of like a, a mini Trump where he just wants to be in the media all the time and wants yeah. everyone to know, I'm here, I'm here. Which kind of turns me off, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. 
So yeah, we'll 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 land the entrepreneur plane with that one. All right, dude. <laughs> All right, let's grab a little uh, thing. We can All right. wrap it up with this. All right. All right. You can grab one. Oh, too, grab yeah. one too. All right. Yeah. Let's see. Ooh. We'll just do I one. Like let's line. just you just pick your the best one on your card, and we'll do All that right. one. All right. I'll go. Huh. So do I ask first or you ask first? You can go first. All right. Hmm. Why do you procrastinate? Why do I procrastinate? Um. That's a very interesting question. Well, I definitely do procrastinate. I never really thought about why. Um. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I've thought about why. I just can't figure out why. I just, I just know I'm lazy sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. You find that there the, probably is no, but that's like a good fucking. Do you find question. that like the requirement to finish something is what motivates you? Like the the time ticking down. Like it's, it definitely motivates me. And dude, don't get me wrong. Like I work really well under pressure. Yeah, like I find yeah. I work like most of the time my best under pressure. You know, there's a handful of times where it's like not. I think most people procrastinate but... because they're just disorganized, to be honest. Because I used to procrastinate a lot, and I still yeah. do. But when I create lists for myself of things to do for the day, then I start getting them done. Whereas if I don't have any organizational things, then you just. There's this book called Eat, the, eat, the, eat That Frog or Eat This Frog or something. Mm -hmm. It's based on this African thing where they eat this nasty frog, right? That's the names of them. But the idea is. The frog is the shittiest thing you have to do on your to-do list. Mm -hmm. If you get the hardest thing out of the way first, all the rest of it seems easy. Mm. Whereas what most people will do is like, oh, I got this to-do list. I'm going to do these five easy things so I felt like I did something today and I'll push these to tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But they never get to those and they procrastinate because they're the hardest ones and they require the most mental strength or physical strength or whatever it might be. So you just procrastinate and procrastinate because you're just disorganized. So try and do that. I make a list like, okay, which one do I have? Is, is the bitch. I try and knock the bitch off first, right? That's awesome. That's a good way to come at it. Um, now that's helped me a little bit with the procrastination, but... No, I like that, you know? Like, definitely I could see, like, if you got a lot of shit to do, like, in a day, especially, like, something where it's just like, fuck. All right, let's fucking do the dishes first. Like, yeah, that would yeah, always yeah, be, yeah, bro. Exactly. I hate doing the dishes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for me, I just think, right now, I'm thinking specifically, because, I mean, I've been a procrastinator my whole life, so, I mean, if I really want to go down to it, it's probably some, like, weird, deep-seated, like, insecurity yeah, of, like, failure. There's probably, yeah, like, yeah. some real... Let's get like, the therapist out. Yeah, yeah. Right now, what I'm... I'm my mommy didn't I feel love like, me enough. <laughs> yeah, something like that, for sure. It's about it's about my mom. Um, I, I think it's just because I got... I have a lot of stuff going on, and when I... I like one of my favorite things to do is like nothing, dude. Yeah. Just relax. Take a veg. Fucking you, yeah, dude. Like honestly, just like watch a movie or something. And like, I do a lot. Like I have, I would consider three jobs. You know, two of them yeah. part time, one full time. I got a daughter. I got a girl. I got I got a lot of shit going on. Plus a podcast. Um. I don't, see, I'm the opposite, man. I'm an uppers <sighs> guy. Yeah. I just want to be doing stuff. I'm like, if yeah. I, if I'm sitting there, like. If it's nine, like eight, I'm busy, if, I am busy. If, you know, but what? but if it's eight at night and I've just got home, sure I'll watch a movie and relax. Mm -hmm. But I like to be like if it's seven, I'm like I'm gonna go for a bike ride. Yeah, I'm I can be more like, productive. I, I like, I it's, like not, that. it's not about being productive. I just have a lot of energy. Oh, okay, okay. So I like to do stuff. Like, I don't do the stuff I'm, I should be doing. That's what I procrastinate on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I'm like I should fix this. But Wait, I think so I'm do you through. smoke weed? No. Never Yo, have. maybe the reason I procrastinate <laughs> is weed, bro. I mean, <laughs> no, it's not. It's not, babe. It's it not. not. <laughs> it's not. Did you watch these? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I figured out the female comic I like. Okay. She just came to me. She's from the UK. It just came. All right, all right. Her name's Jen Brister. Oh, I don't know her. She's a lesbian. Okay. Super funny. It, it was when you said the mom, when we said the mommy thing, because mm -hmm. she has this joke when she goes, a mother's relationship with her son is very different from a mother's relationship with her daughter. With the son, she's like, Oh, sweetheart, are you okay? Do you need anything? You're so good. Who's mommy's little boy? And she's like, and with her daughter, it's like this. You look fat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Okay. I'm going to do this one. What 
might you enjoy doing if you were less self-conscious? Now, before mm. you answer, I just want to say, obviously, like, being a performer and some, you're a very well-spoken guy. Like, imagine you're not as self-conscious as some others, but, like, there's got to be something. Yeah. Yeah? I'm sure there is. I'm trying to think while I'm talking. So. Yeah, and I'm thinking this is a tough one because... Mm -hmm. So, I, I'm a cyclist, like I said, right? And last year I got voted... Like we had this, like, end of cycling season party. And the guys, were in, like, they made, like, this stupid list. Like, you know, like, this guy gets this award. I got the award for the cyclist who wears the least clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so, for the... You know the, the polar bear dip? Yeah. So I did that this year for the first time. I wore, I wore a Borat outfit. That's <laughs> fucking funny. You got so, photos? There's a video on my Instagram. Oh, shit. Okay. I was, uh, that's when I realized I got to lose some weight. <laughs> uh, if I, was I, I feel like I would die if I did that. Dude, so, I didn't even get in all the way. No? I got up to here. Yeah. And, like, my feet were burning just so bad. Like, because the cold just hits you, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. But, like, okay, I went in. I'm done. Never doing that again. <laughs> yeah, that's what I jumped off of, like, so there's, like, in I used to live in BC on mm -hmm. Vancouver Island and, like, the mountains, like, the runoff, like, all the the lakes or rivers that are close to, like, the mountains, like, the water is just, like, super cold. Even in, like, summertime, mm. dude. And, like, I liked, I'm into swimming, but I like, like, cliff jumping. And I would just, I jumped into, like, a bunch of things. I remember when I went to visit last time, we were, like, driving across the island. And literally, like, any, like, cliff I saw into water, I'd be like... Oh, I'm jumping off. We like pull over for like five minutes. I jump off. We drive another hour. I jump off again, like that kind of shit. And like the runoff water in the middle of summer, dude. Like I can't be in that shit for like longer than a minute. Like I'm shivering when mm. I get out. It's fucking wild. Do the polar bear dip. I'm like, I'm a little bit skinnier than you, dude. I feel like I die. Dude, it was dude, yeah, don't do it. I just wanted to get it off the bucket list, right? Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm self conscious about, to be honest. Guy used to streak. Like, all the time when I was single. and I, I did that back you know, in the back day. Back when we were 20. And you yeah, know, yeah, like, hell yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> um, Man, oh, you know what I, I would do more? Which doesn't sound that exciting after all the other stuff that I do. <laughs> dancing. Dancing. See, I, I wasn't self-conscious about dancing, but when you marry a professional dancer, you become self-conscious about it because she's like, nope, you suck. You need to, yeah, you can't dance like that around me, <laughs> you know, like, I go, to, I go to, like, I'll go to, like, Latin clubs with her. Yeah. And I'll just sit in the corner like a, like a loser. Just my ear, just, I'm like, go dance with that guy. He's a really good dancer, sweetie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I become, like, a cuck. <laughs> but, yeah. like, other people think, like, if she's not there and I go dancing with them, like, like you know, Canadian girls, like, you're such a good dancer, oh, my God. But she's like, you're shit. <laughs> terrible <laughs> I think I'm gonna say acting dude let's say acting and not it's like yeah I want to get into it and maybe eventually I get into it you know I think the first step along those lines is uh, getting like an agent it's mm. tough man Gang, acting is such a weird gig yeah I know a lot of people that are like they dabble in it. And I'm like, fuck, it doesn't seem like... I could I could fit a little bit of it in, you like, know? People, people, when they dabble in it, yeah. that means they do like 10 auditions a day and they get like one gig a year and like uh, a dabble. Yeah. Like, it's, my see, kid, my definitely... kids did it for like a little bit a few years ago. Yeah. It just got overwhelming for them because like the, the, the agent would just keep sending them auditions and then we had to set up a camera and set up this. Then Because now it's all self-tape. Mm-hmm. So back in the day when it was like, go for an audition, the agent wouldn't send you a hundred of them because you only have so much time in a day, right? Like, oh, I'm going to send you to this audition in Toronto on, on Wednesday at six o'clock. Like, okay. Now it's like, they send you like five auditions a week, six auditions a week. And you're like, oh, and you, you want to get it perfect because it's, it's a camera. So mm -hmm. you can redo the take over and over again. So like, there were some auditions where like the whole family would be fighting. I'm like, no, you have to do it like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got you. It's like, yeah, and, even, it, and it was hard for even me, like if I try and do it, because acting's tough. I think I'm better at now now that I'm doing comedy. Mm -hmm. But they said the hardest thing to do is be yourself. Like I can do accents, I can like be characters, I can do character acting so much easier. Mm -hmm. But like most of acting roles, they want you to be you, but that person. Yeah. They want that person to be the reflection of you, right? Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to be yourself on camera, right? 
But yeah, it's tough, man. That's a that's a tough gig. Mm-hmm. It's fun to do. Damn. <laughs> All right, brother. I guess we'll we'll wrap it up. You can let these people know where to get at you if you like. Yeah, you can follow me on uh, Instagram or TikTok, which I'm going to start using more. Okay. At Zahan K K A Comedy at Z. That's my email. Zahan K Comedy is my TikTok and Instagram handle. So Z A H A N K A Y Comedy on both of those. All right. And I'm going to eventually get a website up, but got to have more content yeah, for that, man. I feel like, right? Do you, have a website for your, do you have a website for your comedy? No, nah, not really. I have, like, I have my YouTube. I have Facebook. Is, is your YouTube for Instagram. The, for I the... use Linktree for all, like, my stuff. Yeah, but do you use your YouTube for comedy or for this, or both? Both. Both. Yeah. I only really have, like, two or three sets on there. And um, a little animated short from one of, uh, like, my jokes that a buddy made. Um, but like I said, man, I want to, I want to try to start approaching things from a different, from a different way. And that includes like social media, whatever, you know, whatever that way is. I'm so not... One last thing about yeah. that. I did a show at Burlington Brewery about a month and a half ago. There was this guy, Matt Pachinski on the show. I don't know if you know him. No. He's a Toronto guy. And he was telling me, so he blew up on social. He's like, he does like, you know, his sketches or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he opened for Tom Segura's wife in Toronto. Oh wow! And in and in Vancouver. Then he went down to the mothership in Texas, and she got him on shows. Nice. And I mean, he's only a couple of years in the game, like relatively new. Like his comedy wasn't for me, like because he's a younger guy. Mm-hmm. So it's more like you know younger guy jokes. So again, look, everyone's got the demographic, right? I'm yeah. forty, <laughs> so you know different uh, things we're into, but. Dude blew up just because this, and he's, it's not like he's millions of followers. He's got 80,000. I checked his stuff out, which is still quite a bit. Yeah. But Tom Segura reposted one of his things, and then his wife saw it, and that's where it's at nowadays. Like, you got to get that social uh, yeah. hit, right? Yeah. So, anyways. Anyways. <laughs> Might, might have to get back on TikTok. I fucking got shadow banned early, did early you? on. Yeah, dude. It's okay. like COVID stuff. I was just posting clips on my podcast and we were talking about COVID. And then I went from getting like, you know, uh, whatever X amount of views and likes to getting like 10 and shit. So do you know like, do you know Heather Fudge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so she, she was on my show last week and she said she's got a puppet now. She's going to start doing a ventriloquism. Uh-huh. So I was like, I'm going to get a puppet. I'm going to get a dick puppet. And call it Red the Cock. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I might get banned on TikTok. And then <laughs> Me, it's weird. Like, there's so much fucking shit on TikTok that you're. It should be banned, but it's not. And then you talk about a fucking pandemic that's going on, and you get fucking. Yeah, you political know, stuff gets you banned. Fucking right? stupid, man. Yeah. Um. Anyways, guys. Like always, this awesome. podcast is brought to you by Neon Light District. Hit them up. Use code Pillow Talk to save ten percent, and by the Great North Apparel. Hit them up. Use code Pillow Talk to save thirty percent. I want to thank my boy Zahan again for coming by. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks for having me. And uh, I'll see you guys in two weeks. Peace the fuck out.